Hey guys, it's Sam with the Blind Spots. So we've got a special guest on the show today. This is Derek Daniel. You guys may have seen him already or seen his videos. He and I are doing a uh, joint collaboration on the VoiceOver 101 videos. And uh, But I wanted to take some time and dive deep, get to know the individual <laughs> that who is Derek Daniel. So Derek, thank you very much for coming on the show and um, subjecting yourself to my inquiries. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Great, great. So guys, link will be down in the description down below where you can go to Derek's channel. I'll also have a link at the end of the show and there might even be a link on the uh, the screen somewhere. Uh, it depends on how lazy I am during the editing process. <laughs> <laughs> so Derek, uh, real quick, tell me about your channel. Give me, a, give me just a, a brief summary about your channel. Let everybody know what it's all about. Uh, my channel is basically all about helping people who uh, have gone or are going through physical sight loss to discover life after that sight loss. Um, it's not necessarily so much about how to be blind. It's more about the aspects of dealing with what comes after you lose your sight. So uh, people that have been blind since birth can definitely watch it and probably learn a few things. But I think my target audience are those people and the families of those people who are losing their sight uh, maybe recently or are going through it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think um, that's one thing I really like about your channel is it deals with that. Um, because I, I tend to, uh, I don't have a ton of videos that deal with uh, what happens immediately afterwards. Um, I have a lot of, you know, how to do this when you can't see or, you know, what mm -hmm. products work great for people with low vision or no vision. But I think uh, a channel like yours is needed. And it comes from experience, right? So let's let's get into your vision impairment and how it all came about and all that. Well, uh, yes, it does come from personal experience. Uh, I lost my sight when I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, so just a quick little background. Um, I was adopted when I was about three or four weeks old, uh, raised with a family, and everything was great, and graduating high school, and it was I was going off to college. And that summer uh, that I turned 18, I began to lose sight in my left eye, and I didn't know what the heck was going on. I thought uh, people said it was a floater. They didn't know. Mm -hmm. So finally, I went to my local optometrist. He sent me to an ophthalmologist who sent me to another specialist. <laughs> I mean, they thought I had MS. They thought I had a brain tumor, all kinds of stuff. Uh. So <laughs> it was a mess. Um, but finally, after some blood tests and meeting with uh, a specialist uh, in Indianapolis, I ended up being diagnosed with something called Labors, or Labors, depending on how you pronounce it, mm -hmm. uh, Labors Hereditary Optic Neuropathy. And it's basically a, a disease of the optic nerve. The nerve swells really big, uh, it gets really damaged, and uh, then it goes back down to normal size for some reason. Uh, I lost uh, all my central vision. Uh, I have some vision on the top and the sides, but... Uh, I lost about 85%. And the main thing with this one, it happens most of the time, happens very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I lost it in a matter of about six to eight weeks. Wow. Um, yeah, so that summer was not the best summer. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> to say the least. So yeah, I ended up missing my first semester of college and so forth. But yeah, so I went from 2020 to, you know, like 22,000 or something ridiculous. Um, and the reason I mentioned that I'm adopted is because it's genetic or hereditary is in the name, and I didn't know it, and as the cheesy jokes always says, I didn't even see it coming, but um, <laughs> people say that all the time, it's terrible. I've met, since met my birth family, uh, I met my birth mother and all that stuff, so it's been really interesting. They did not uh, know about it, they were not aware, because it's very rare and very sporadic, so they had like an uncle who lost his sight, but you know, they didn't know why, mm -hmm. um, and that sort of thing, so... Yeah, it's been an interesting journey since then. So, 18. So, that, does that mean you, you were driving probably by then and everything? I was driving, yeah. I had gotten my license when I was 16, so I've been driving for a couple of years at that point. Oh. And interestingly enough, I remember the last night that I drove because I, we were going home and um, uh, my parents were following me home from something. I think we were out to dinner. And we were driving home and it was dark. And every time a car would come towards me, I would hit the brakes because I couldn't tell 
oh, which yeah. side of the road the lights were on because they were very hazy and blurry. Yeah. And my parents were like, uh, you might not <laughs> need to drive right now. <laughs> so, because at the, at the time we thought we might, I might get my sight back. We didn't know what it was. Uh -huh. and so they're like, why don't you just wait and not drive? I was like, okay. And then that was it. Okay. And how many times have you driven since then? <laughs> uh, two or three. Uh, <laughs> uh, usually in parking lots and so forth. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I did have a, a friend in college that it was my roommate, and we'd go to parties together, and I really didn't drink, um, and he would always get pretty hammered. Yeah. And one of the things that was interesting was, which one's worse, you drunk or me sober? Which one is driving the yes. worse here? <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> We never got the answer. But. Yeah, it is a toss-up. <laughs> well, you mentioned it's hereditary. So does anybody else in your family uh, have uh, labors? <clears throat> I know it's really interesting because from what I've learned about it, which uh, probably is more than I would have ever known, but not as much as there probably is, but uh, it's very sporadic. So I have a half-brother who um, is not visually impaired, mm. um, and they don't know, like, why didn't he? Because basically what happens is the gene is passed down and the females are carriers and the males typically uh you know start to lose their sight uh it's passed down this is medical it's passed down through the mm -hmm. mitochondria which comes from your mother so like i won't pass it on to my children all right uh, because of that so i'm not a carrier um but why he hasn't lost his sight we don't know but i have a nephew because i have a sister and there's a good chance he'll start to lose his sight but again, it's very sporadic, so we're not sure, you know, why he didn't and he might and I did and that sort of thing. Ah, nice. Well, that brings up a good question. Um, if you knew that you were a carrier, do you think that would have affected your decision to, to start a family? You know, we talked about that uh, way back. Of course, we knew I wasn't a character from like the beginning, yeah. you know, as, as much as, as early on as we could. But we talked about it like, would I have purposely subjected my children to that um and it's one of those hard things because it's like oh i don't want to have kids because i don't want to purposely knowingly do that yeah but i also know that when i spoke to my half sister after i met her because again i met her much later in life because of my birth family mm -hmm. she had already had kids and so now she's like she told me she said well at least if my son starts to lose his sight we'll know it's not ms or a tumor or anything like that yeah. And he's got somebody he can talk to and things. So uh, to say, I don't know if I would have or not. I, I lean towards probably not, but I have kids now and they're pretty awesome. So, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, it's, it's hard to make that decision. It's hard to say what you would have said after you have kids because you're like, kids are great. I love my children. So, of course, you know, but... <laughs> Before kids, I'm like, eh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, before kids, I, I probably would have had a different answer. But now yeah. that I have them, I'm like, well, I can't get rid of them. You yeah. know? <laughs> Nobody will buy them. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you finished school, though. How was it uh, trying to get through college with the vision impairment? <clears throat> you know, the first part of college was terrible because I was on my own, and uh, I didn't have a roommate. I had a guide dog at the time, mm -hmm. and so it was just me and the dog in my room, and um it was only about six months after I'd lost my sight. It was it was very depressing because I'm a very social person. I was like, oh, lonely. You know, I was like, here it is. <laughs> so lonely. So, uh, <laughs> so um, college at first was difficult, although it was interesting. Uh, and I went to Indiana State for the first semester, and then I transferred to the University of Southern Indiana. But I actually went to school for a semester with – like I think the daughter of the superintendent of the Indiana School for the Blind. Mm. So just randomly and ironically got to know her a little bit, and she was very helpful. So things like that, you know, there were little things like that along the way. But college in and of itself, uh, USI was a great school, but they, they were young and didn't have a lot of student services, oh. uh, you know, going on. Yeah. So that was kind of difficult. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, it's like anything else. You, I, I learned to become my own advocate. So – I'd go into classes on the first day and say, like, I'd give them a letter, like, I'm blind, here's how to help me, you know, that sort of thing, <laughs> where I just had to figure that out because the Student Service Center, it's not that they were bad, they were just young and weren't quite sure how to handle things. I'm sure they're better now. But, yeah. Um, so I learned to become my own advocate through that, which was good because uh, that's what I would tell a lot of people is, you know, be your own advocate. Not everybody's going to do that for you. So I, d I learned to do that through college, through classes and, and theater and, and different things like that. 
Yeah, I I never had any problems. Um, uh, I'm much better at it now. I was going to say never had any problems letting people know that I couldn't see or I needed help uh, going through school. I'm way better than I than I was. I'm way better now than I was then. But um, I have a friend who she hid it from everybody as long as she possibly could. And because of that, she says she had a, a really hard time going through school and and regrets that now as an adult she wishes she had been more open about it yeah and up front um she would have enjoyed her her educational years much better yeah it's interesting because i i don't come out with that information when i meet new people mm -hmm. until it's relative because i don't want to be like i'm derek i'm blind you know? yeah yeah <laughs> i don't want them to define me by that right but uh, it is funny uh i worked in entertainment uh for a while and uh, there was a time where we were uh, sitting around, we were auditioning for solos, and so we'd just go around and different people sing the solo. And my friend, whom I worked with before, was sitting next to me, and, and I'd ask him, like, you know, what are the words to this line and things like that, and we'd go over it. Well, there were some new people, and they didn't realize I was blind, and so they'd be like, what a jerk. Why doesn't he just learn the words? Because like, <laughs> I didn't even have a book in front of me. You know, like, yeah. I was just sitting there with no book. They're like, just pick up a book, you jerk. And I was like, I would if I could only see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feel terrible, which I don't intentionally do, although it was funny at the time. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I uh, I don't I don't come out with it to to people unless it's relevant. But like college professors, things like that, I would always let them know up front because I didn't want them calling on me in class or yeah. uh, handing me a test or something and things like that. I feel like if it's relevant, I always let people know, you know, right up front. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to stay tuned for part two of my interview with Derek Daniel. There will be a link in the description down below, or you can click the link on the screen right now. Thank you again for watching. This is Sam with The Blind Spot. I'll see you next time.